This is Mr. Magnifico, and in the previous part of the Frankentrike project, we explored the proof of concept by attaching hoverboard motors to a BMX bike, transforming it into a one-of-a-kind trike. We were thoroughly impressed with the performance of the trike. However, there were some lingering issues which we are going to be addressing in this video. Our first challenge was the beaten up aluminium bar, which couldn't support the weight of the frame and the rider. To address this, we replaced it with a solid steel bar. The thick, durable steel bar can be directly welded onto the bike frame. However, before we could do that, we needed holes at both ends to accommodate the motors and brackets. The alloy brackets that secure these motors were cut from the original hoverboard frame. While we couldn't weld them directly to the steel, we can use bolts and locking nuts to hold them in place through these holes. Because we are going to be using bolts and locking nuts, we do not need to thread these holes. The new steel bar is slightly wider than the aluminium one, which means it will give the trike a larger wheelbase, minimizing the risk of it toppling over. And because the bar is much thicker, the mounting gap on the frame needs to be adjusted too. Once again, I took a grinder to the frame to ensure that the new bar sits perfectly in place. This will also help the welding process. Following this, I removed some of the black paint from the bar to help the weld bond more securely. The next step, of course, was to weld the bar onto the frame. This was my first time welding, so it may not look pretty, but I made sure it was a good, strong weld. To further solidify the bond between the bar and the frame, I added a section of steel and welded it onto both the frame and the bar, giving me extra assurance that it will not come loose. I decided to grind down the welding as well, just to clean it up a bit, but it also revealed any potential weak points which I went back and re-welded. To make it all uniform in colour, I decided to prime the welded area, preparing it for a spray painting. Again, I am not a professional, so the technique might be wrong, but I was happy with the results I got. One of the other issues we faced with the proof of concept was the brakes. There were absolutely no brakes on the BMX. And because it's a BMX, the handlebars rotate 360 degrees, which means it would have originally had the cantilever style brakes. As we do not have the fittings for the cantilever brakes, we are going to be using V-brakes instead. These brakes were taken off another bike, and they will be adjusted after everything is wired up and ready to go. The rear brake mounts will not be needed as the brakes will be electronic and the battery box will be mounted here.
The next step was to find a suitable location for the motor controllers. I did not want them to be too far away from the motors, so I believe this is the ideal location for them. I marked the screw fittings with a marker and then drilled them through. After drilling through the plastic tool, I decided to place a metal sheet to ensure there was no further damage. After this, we used a top and die set to create some threads for the screws that will hold the controllers in place. After all four holes were threaded, I decided to paint the trike so that it can be a uniform colour. The colour I chose was matte black. Again, I'm not a professional, so this may not be the best paint job, but I was happy with the end result. I also painted the battery box in the same colour. With the paint job complete, it was time to mount the battery box and I must admit they do look nice in matte black. Initially I chose to mount the battery box using zip ties. In hindsight, this was an error on my part. Because the trike uses hoverboard motors and a BMX bike frame, there is zero suspension. This was an issue as the cable ties made of plastic rubbed against the metal and they did not last very long. However, I do go on to address this issue later in the video. With the battery box in place. The next task was the tedious task of wiring the controllers. The power cables were easy as the XT60 connectors were a breeze to connect. However, the motors used for this project did not have the original connectors for the phase wires, so I had to make do using a connection block. This wasn't too much of an issue as it did the job really well and the motors are still removable and serviceable. I had to make sure to mismatch two of the three phase wires to ensure that both motors spin in different directions. I tested this to make sure that their motors were running as expected. After this I connected the electric cutoff brakes. A quick test ensured that the motors and the electric cutoff brakes worked fine before moving forward. Once I was convinced these were working, it was time to move on to tidying up the wires as well as installing the brakes and the throttle in its final position.
Once the throttle and the brake lever was installed in their final position, it was time to readjust the brakes so that it can be ready to go. And ready to go it was. This was the second iteration of the Franken trike. It now has brakes, a place to keep your feet, a 36 volt 12 amp hour battery with a built in capacity indicator and charging port. I will be making a separate video on the battery box, so keep an eye out for that. The second iteration of the Franken trike is stronger, faster, safer, and the battery lasts much, much longer. However, I was not satisfied with using a PVC pipe as the footrest, so I decided to do something about it and took apart a children's slide to use the metal for the footrest. It was the perfect diameter and a solid piece of metal. There's also a convenient hole at the bottom of the bike which allowed me to screw the footrest into place. The slide also came with these end caps which made the footrest look clean and safe to use. This was done after the paint job so I didn't get around to painting it. Besides, I think it looks better the way it is. I also took the opportunity to bolt the battery box in place instead of using zip ties. This added to the solid build. I can now happily say that the second iteration of the Franken trike is complete. It is now time for a test drive. It is evident that the Franken trike is now faster and stronger. However, there is always room for improvement. So join me in the next video and see how we can improve on this. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe.